Some of the most notorious Cuba-related deaths in U.S. history became current questions in a Miami federal courtroom this week. Brothers to the rescue pilot shot down over the ocean almost 30 years ago. Also, democracy-seeking Castro opponent Osvaldo Paya killed in a mysterious car crash. That was 2012. Insult to injury for those convinced they are victims of Manuel Rocha's spycraft. The double agent for Cuba took a plea for 15 years in prison. The Miami-based former U.S. diplomat admitted he was using his high-level U.S. government access to support Cuba. But the judge this week decided prosecutors were right when they said there were no individual victims and so no restitution necessary. So we have with us, as, uh, as we have so often on this subject, um, Emilio T. Gonzalez, who is, I guess for our purposes today, a former, uh, what, U.S. spy? <laughs> no. Taxpayer, taxpayer. Uh, yeah, a head of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration <clears throat> Services. You've been airport director. You've been with the Western Hemisphere Affairs at the National Security Council. And, um, and you knew Manuel Rocha. Yes. And so that is, and you've provided us so much insight. So I, I know you, you and so many have really questioned why no restitution to victims, but in this restitution hearing, they brought up that there's really no evidence to support a single victim for restitution. Does, does that make legal sense to you? You know, th this is a case that has a legal component <clears throat> and then a, a political and ideological component. Um, legally, it probably does make sense, but I will tell you that, and I've said this before, this is the most consequential spy case in the history of the United States. Gre e even uh, gr greater Montes, than, Belen Montes? Gr greater than Benedict Arnold trying Oof. to sell West Point, greater than Ana Belen Montes. Um, this man has spied for 40 years. And, and he did it for ideological reasons. Okay, well, let me, let me just stop you because he, in his plea, he did not plead guilty to spying. I'm getting to that. Okay. Okay, so, you know, there's, a, there's an old saying, you know, Napoleon once said, if you want to judge the measure of a man, know what the world was like when that person was 20. Hmm. And when Manuel Rocha was 20, Latin America was in convulsion. We had guerrilla wars. We had leftist governments. He was, he was recruited for ideological reasons. The fact that the federal government would take what I would consider to be a kid glove approach to this person, I, I think is, is unfathomable. Which you have said, and yes. which many others have said, but, but bring me back to this week, because restitution was the subject okay, this so, week. So he, he agreed to plead to the two biggest cases, uh, two biggest uh, charges. One, yeah. one was uh, not being a registered agent, or being a, an unregistered agent, conspiring to be an unregistered Anyway, he was under the control of a foreign government. He picked up a 15-year sentence. If you go to the Bureau of Prisons website, they say he's going to be out in 12. That's number one. The federal government says the only person that, or the only entity that was harmed was the federal government. Therefore, nobody else is entitled to restitution. Then they go back and say, and oh, by the way, we find him. We find him half a million dollars. Well, he owns $4 million worth of real estate alone. So a half a million dollar fine is nothing. Okay, so you're still making the case for they were too lenient. Completely. Okay, but bring me back to restitution because there was <clears throat> Osvaldo Paya's daughter. Correct. Is furious. Correct. Um, so did he have a hand in that car crash? Did he have a hand in the Brothers to the Rescue shoot down? And where is that evidence to allow the so, restitution to be paid to a victim? So, so there, therein goes... The, the quandary is the federal government has stated that they've received no proof that any information that Manuel Rocha gave to the Cubans caused anybody harm. Right. But when you think about that, um, the Cuban government is a voracious collector and seller of intelligence. Sure. So we don't know whether any of the things he gave them caused harm until we do a damage assessment. And a damage assessment can't be done in 30 days, which is essentially what we have here. So I think that the federal government was very dismissive. I think they wanted to, uh, and by the way, and I'm not taking anything away from the prosecutors. They're very good lawyers. The Natural Security Division of, uh, of DOJ is very good at what they do. But I think they wanted to make this case go away. And by the way, and another, another area that we discussed before was denaturalization. They barely touched it. Um, I think they addressed it in the original plea. In his allocution, he essentially wrote this off as a youthful indiscretion. 
I mean, it was almost like, eh, wow. you know, he didn't show up. Um, he, he waived his right to show up. So, so something's not right here. And, and, and to, to your point, yes, he received a 15 year sentence. You know, that's nothing to, to sneeze about. But there's just something about the way this case was handled that brings up more questions than there are answers to. So to your point, if they're still doing a damage assessment, why have a restitution hearing now before the damage assessment is complete where there may be evidence of, the, and we're talking legal U.S. law evidence. I mean, you, well, you, you can say, I know this happened, well, you, but you need the evidence. But you can, ha you, can have it, a right? you can have a restitution hearing and you can say, you know, at this point, we don't know that anybody else um, was damaged pending uh, an inquiry. But that's okay. not what happened. Apparently not. Mm -hmm. Apparently not. And, and so what you have is you have a lot of very upset people who feel like he had a kid glove, a kid glove treatment. Ana Belen Montes spied for 17 years and she got 25 years. Manuel Rocha spied for 42 years and he's getting 12. What, what's your take on that? I mean, do you think the government will get more information out of him by treating him well, well that, that way? Listen, that's part of it. And, I, and by the way, this isn't over. I, I think that as, as he's debriefed more and more and the, the, the debriefing could very well last for months. Um, I think there are other shoes to drop. I think you may see other news articles of people being picked up. Um, but, but what does that mean? Uh, people who are spying? Well, you know, when you're debriefing somebody, he did not, he didn't spend 40 years here by himself in a closet somewhere. You know, he actually had to talk to people. He visited people. He went to places. Um, there may be businesses involved. So there's a lot out there that we don't know. And to your earlier point, maybe the FBI thought, well, if we back off a little bit, he'll give us more. But, but the optics are not good. When you figure that every other spy, and, and this is another thing, you know, well, he really didn't, you know, admit to spying. It's a difference without a distinction, you know? But, but legally. Le that's why I say there's, right. a, there's a In legal that component. Law, that's the there's a legal component right. and there's a political and ideological component. Right. So, so, you know, he's gone away. And this case for the time being has gone away until somebody else gets arrested and we'll be having a conversation about that one too. I look forward to it. Emilio <laughs> Gonzalez, always great to have you. Thank you so much. All right.